Hello, welcome to Soflo TV. My voice kind of shaky, but I'm going to try my best to make sure say, you can hear everything when I'm happy. Alright, so. <laughs> welcome to Soflo TV again, everybody. It's your host with the most. So, this is the video that I told y'all to look out for, right? If you were on the live when we did the live yesterday, we went live on social on SoFlo TV on YouTube. I said during the discussion that because people kept asking me, so SoFlo TV, you keep on. I say, Andrew Holness should do this or he's not doing that or so. What would you do if you were? I said, okay, I'm not gonna answer you here. I'm gonna do a video, and in that video, I'm going to tell you what the some of the things that I would do. I've come up with a list of 10 things that I would definitely do in no specific order but 10 things that I would either do or push to get done, right? And these are things that I believe would better Jamaica as a society, of course. For one, for one I would make sure that, and this is not even on my list of 10, this just came to me as soon as I started talking. I would make sure that every deported individual coming back into the country goes through some form of a rehabilitation program. So, for instance, you can't just walk off the airplane and out into society like that, right? Especially if you've done prison time overseas, you would have to come here and then you would have to go through a some kind of... you. Rehabilitation of some sense, but like you have to be, you have to get caught up to date on how the system works here. You would have to demonstrate that you understand the rules, laws, and regulations of this country, how the system works here, how you go about finding employment, or how you go about connecting with resources that can help you to further better yourself, right, and um, integrate back into society in the best way possible. Not only that, I will also make sure that there is a database, which I'm sure they have already, a database, but I want to know even deeper, not only just fingerprints, I want blood work. I want to know who's coming back with hepatitis C, who's coming back HIV positive, and all these other things that I want these people to be monitored. I want to work closely with the U.S. or U.K. or Canada or wherever you're being deported from to, find, to, to share information as far as, okay, this person is, John Doe is coming back on Wednesday. We've had John Doe in custody for the past four years. John Doe has been on psych medication for the past three years, um, developed some psychological issues, has shown tendency to violence, had to be subdued, was injected with so-and-so, has been on Promazol, this, that, that other kind of pill. I need to know all that stuff while you're coming back into the country, right? Now, let's start with the list that I actually had prepared. So the first thing on this list is, and remember, it's not in any specific order, just what's here. If you come to Jamaica to make money, to do business, a percentage of your earnings, whether it's 10, 20, 30% of your earnings, will be left back in Jamaica. Here's how though. It will go directly towards a national trade institution where the youths attend free of cost to earn certification or diplomas in various trades. A portion of it will also go to a medical institution Upgrades. Two of the biggest things that Jamaica needs. Jamaica needs free education past secondary or high school level. Right? So if one is able to say go through mechanic school and become a certified mechanic, an ASE certified mechanic who knows how to fix a Mercedes Benz or a, a Lada or a Toyota or whatever, any kind of car, then from there on, you have given someone a way to feed themselves for the rest of their lives, right? So we definitely need that in Jamaica. Because right now as it stands, if your people don't have money to send you to certain institutions to learn certain things where your interest lies, then you're just left out in the cold, 
right? Or you have to go look it. And also, Jamaica is in desperate, desperate need of first world medical institutions. We have hospitals. Look from when Shaggy and, oh, Shaggy and friends trying to put beds into, and I refuse to believe, but I'm not going to down Shaggy because he's doing more than I'm doing. But I'm just saying, I refuse to believe that all these big names come to do concerts every year for Shaggy and friends and still can't come up with beds. I think personally if they cut out the big names performing and just pull their resources together, they could have furnished this institution with beds a long time ago. One of the things that I hate about Jamaica is that the wealthy, especially our politicians and those up in, in the upper class, or even people just with a visa, they fly out to other countries if they have serious medical issues. We have some of the brightest minds in Jamaica, right? Some of the best doctors. Why can't we have these institutions at home and when things go wrong with our citizens, we can look forward to the best health care in the world right here in our own home. So that would be my first aim with that. All right. Number two, I would afford dual citizenship to all Jamaican born and their votes must or will count in local and PM elections. So your local government, district, this, whatever, and also when it's time to vote for who's going to be the Prime Minister of um, Jamaica, you are a citizen of the United States of America, but you were born in Jamaica, so you can afford, you can have dual citizenship. You can stay overseas and vote. Via right? You can stay overseas and vote through a verifi verifiable way via internet and your votes count, right? Uh, but there would be some restrictions to it, of course. You must have been back inside of the country within the past five years. Mm -hmm. or, or have a, have a, a savings account at some credible financial institution with a minimal set amount. This would show that you're serious about either investing in the country or coming back to the country, right? So nobody can say, you know, have no talking of this because your money don't come here or when last you come here, that kind of thing. I vote for my prime minister because I come here on a regular basis. Yeah, I don't come more than every five years because I'm so busy over so-and-so running a business or doing whatever. Life gets busy, but I'm here. I'm here every five years, and I have a account here with all my money coming here, and I plan to do so-and-so in the future. That's what it would show. You agree? Yes, I totally agree. Shagan, quiet. CCTV would be the third one. I will have CCTV and shot spotters everywhere in the country. CCTV and shot spotters everywhere in the country. The CCTVs will be monitored by an outside entity. In, and there would be a lot of them that were placed in locations that are unknown to the local law enforcement officials. So local police, a lot of them wouldn't know where a lot of these CCTVs are located at. Right? especially those of the lower level ranks, and only a few chosen ones of the higher levels would know. So we know who to hold accountable when they are tampered with. What do you say about that one? Number four, every street and lane, nook and cranny would have a name. Now, as an infantry soldier, when we went off into Iraq and Afghanistan, the first thing we did when we locked down any area was we mapped out the entire area, we sat down, we laid the map out, and we gave streets names. So every street had a name. That, and then that, was, that map was passed around throughout our entire battalion. That means when there's something going down and I say, meet me on... Science Street and 46th Avenue. Woo, woo, woo. Right away. No problem getting there. And we are at a point of meeting in no time. 
Right now in Jamaica, you have a whole lot of zinc fence lane and back bush and back a wall areas where people run behind it and police can't even say, um, meet me on 1st and 16th. Or he was spotted on 16th heading towards 27th. They can't direct help in time. Perfect example. The, the, the funeral that just got shot up the other day. Where them said the man come from? Out of the bush somewhere behind the building. Shoot up the place and disappear where? When the place was surrounded by not only immediate surrounding, but cordoned off on a wider basis. This is where they have the emergency, uh, what do you call it? State of, State of emergency going on at. You have JCF and JDF covering the area. And a man is able to come, shoot up the place. Man dead, five more people injured by a gunshot and get away with it and not be caught. That would have never happened. That would have never happened. Anyway, every street and lane would have a name. On we go. Number five, military service for all citizens starting with serving as a cadet. So we would start from, and I read this today, starting from age 12. So I said military um, service starting from a certain age, but let's start out with the cadets first. I, the only thing I didn't do was put a specific age in it, which in this I would put a specific age based on something that I saw today. So let's go with age 12, right? 12 is right before they start feeling themselves. You know, I was a teenager once, so I know this. I'm speaking from personal experience, and I'm sure y'all can relate also. Unless no fall in the truth to forget when time when I did rank, right? So 13 is around the corner. 12, perfect age to grab them. And start start this uh, instilling discipline and other and, and and good morals right and good work ethic in a young individual so but that would also lead into military service i mean active military service two years in the army and after that you can decide if you want to continue to go more make it a career or go off into this trade institution which I first started talking about learn a trade or and also coming through these ranks going into the military we would make it so that a skilled trade was learned that way as well that what that way you didn't just leave the army and learn only army tactics which you can't use on the outside nobody don't want you to kick in their doors in the neighborhood and stick up nobody with guns in the neighborhood so unless you're gonna go open a um, security company or a personal protection company or something like that which could be beneficial to some but I'm guessing majority of people wouldn't want that so there would be many jobs inside there and you would be able to learn and come out with one of these skills ready to face the world right with hands-on work experience 